five um welcome to tuesday's maths um my lovely um <laughs> videographer my son <laughs> is going to just zoom in now on the powerpoint and um, the powerpoint will be on the website so that you can have a look at that and um, but i'm just going to talk you through the slides as we go uh, so today our maths lesson is to read and interpret tables but we are going to be practicing lots of our math skills that we've already learned so things like reading larger numbers um addition and subtraction uh, we're going to do a little bit of rounding so it's going to involve lots and lots of different skills that we've already learned so it's going to put you to the test a little bit see if you pass who's up for the challenge so on your sheets that are on the website um, you, some of you are going to have um, a diving sheet. This is the easiest sheet. This is the sheet that I've set for the red and the green groups. Uh, the next one is a bit more challenging. So this little icon here tells you that that's for um, yellows uh, for my year sixes. And the next one here is deepest. This has got the most challenge in it. Um, and this is uh, possibly for blues. Blues might want to do this first and then go on to that as a little bit of a challenge, see how you get on. Okay, so we know what our aim is. So here's our first table. This bit here, the, the information that comes above the table is really important and that's the bit that you need to read and take notice of. So it shows the largest attendances ever recorded for football matches. So we can see here we've got Wembley Stadium, Salt Lake Stadium, Maracana Stadium, Hampton Park and Estadio da Luz. And you can see here, these are the maximum attendances, the largest that's ever been recorded in all of those different places. So here's our first question. So it's asking us which stadium had the highest ever attendance for a football match? So you remember earlier I said that we needed to have a look at the biggest numbers. So we're having a look at all of those and comparing them. So you can see that they've all got 100,000 in them. So we need to go to the next column to have a look at what which one is the largest. So we can see in the next column we've got a 9 as the biggest number in the next column. So that means that the Maracana Stadium should have the highest ever attendance for a football match. So shall we see if we're right? There we go, and we are. Let's have a look at what the next question is. So the next question is a bit more tricky. It's asking us what's the difference? So who can remember what's the calculation that we need when we're finding the difference? That's right, it's subtraction between the highest ever attendance and the fifth highest ever attendance. So what does that mean? So we already know from our previous question, the highest ever attendance ever in a stadium was at this stadium here, 199,854. And the fifth highest attendance, so we've got five stadiums here. So the fifth highest ever attendance will be the one that's at the bottom, the one that's the lowest number, which is Wembley Stadium at the top here. So 126,047. So we'd have to do a calculation. We'd have to do 199,854 and we'd have to subtract 126,047. So you can stop the video now and have a go at that calculation. Let's see if you were right. Did you get 73,807? Well done if you did. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. <laughs> so our next question is, what's the total combined attendance of the second and third highest attended matches? So the second highest attended match was which one? That's right, it was the Hampden Park 149,415. And the third highest attended match, which one was that? Yeah, that's right, that was the Estadio de Luz and 
and that was 135,000. So if we're having the total combined attendance, what calculation do you think we need to do? Yeah, that's right, we need to add them together. Well done. So we'd write a calculation like this. Can you have a go? You can pause the video now and have a go at that calculation. Let's see if you were right. So did you get 284,415 as your total? Okay, our next question was, which stadiums have recorded an attendance of between 125,000 and 136,000? So which of those numbers come between those two? Pause the video and write the stadiums that come between those two now. Okay, let's see if you are right. Well done if you said those stadiums. Okay, so you can see now we're going on to um, questions that are just a little bit harder. Um, so I'll keep going and see if you can have a go at these challenges. So again, the information at the top of the table is really important. This shows us the cost of car parking in a car park. So you can see under an hour is free between one and two hours, two and four hours, four and six hours and all day. So now we've got a true or false question. So we need to think about this quite carefully. I parked my car at 11.35 and I came back at 15.45. So think about how long that was. We can, when remember when we're working out a difference between times, we can do a timeline like this. We can write the time at one end of the timeline and the other time at the other end of the timeline. And then we can work out how, how far along. So we know that we need 25 minutes to get to 12 o'clock. And then we're going to need an hour to get to one o'clock and another hour to get to two o'clock. Remember this, oh, this is 24 hour clock time. So this will be 3.45 p.m. So we need another hour to get to three o'clock. And then we need to get to 45 minutes past. So we need 45 minutes. And then we just add up the times along here and we know that we can work out that it's 3 hours 45 plus 25. So that's going to be 4 hours and 10 minutes altogether. Okay, so if we come back to the question, the £3.50 that we put in the parking machine was the correct amount for the time I spent. So would it cost £3.50 for that amount of for that amount of time? Is £3.50 enough for four hours and ten minutes? What do you think? Let's see if you are right. Were you right? Is it false? Yeah, because the cost would have been £4.50 because it was over four hours. So I parked my car in the car park for only 15 minutes less than my friend paid, but paid £2.50 less than he did. So we're having a look at which of these have got a difference of £2.50. So we can see here that if we park the car for under an hour, it's free. Park it between one and two hours, it's £2.50. So they would have a difference of £2.50. Could we have 15 minutes less parking? Yeah, maybe he stayed up for 45 minutes, but his friend spent 15 minutes longer. So is it true or is it false? Shall we have a look? It's true. He could have parked his car for 50 minutes, this would have been free. And if my friend parked for six, 65 minutes, which is 15 minutes more, 
this would mean he parked for over an hour and it would have cost him £2.50. So here it says that he parked his car for 109 minutes. So we need to think about how many hours that is. We know that one hour is 60 minutes and we know that two hours is 120 minutes. So we know that that person's probably paid about £2.50. Okay, for 235 minutes, how many hours would that be? So again, if we count in 60s, 120, 180 and 240 would be four hours. So it's just less than four hours. The cost of the parking was two pounds more than mine. So is that right? So do you think that is true or false? False, of course. His parking would have cost two pounds fifty, as we said. Um, and his friend would have parked for three hours and fifty-five, and therefore he would have had three pounds fifty to pay. And it means it's only a pound more, not two pounds more. Okay, so here we've got a table. And you can see that there's some information on the table missing. How would we fill in the missing amounts? Okay, so if we can work out from the top line here that the shot put and the discus are added together to get a total. So here we've got Connor's shot put, his discus, we add them together what would the total be? You can pause the video and work that out now if you want. And then we've got Cassia who's got her shot put missing, but we know the total distance and we know how far she threw the discus. So this time, would it be an ad? Or would it be something different? Yeah, that's right. It would be a subtraction. So we'd take this number away from that number and we'd work out what the subtraction, what, uh, what the answer was for the shot put. Okay, you can stop the video and have a go at that calculation now. The next one we're going to work out, we've got the shot put, we've got the total distance, and again, to find that difference, we'd have to do a subtraction. Can you work out the last two boxes and what they would be? You can stop the video if you need some time to do that. Here we go, and here's what our answers should be. Did you get those? Well done if you did. So we've got our information here. Okay, and it says rounded to the nearest metre. What's the total distance thrown by the three furthest shot put throws? So if we have a look down the shot put throws, which are the three furthest? Here's the one that's most, then the next one, and then the next one. So it's these three that we're adding up. So we add them up, and then we have to round them to the nearest metre. Can you remember how to round? You round by looking at the decimal number. Is it more than five, six, seven, eight, or nine? If it is, then that number goes up. If it's not, the number stays the same. See if you can work out what the rounded number is. Let's have a look and see if you're right. So that's the calculation. And rounded to the nearest metre, you can see that here it's a four. So that number stays the same at 43. If the distance from the discus throw are ordered from longest to shortest, whose throw is in the middle? Yep, yes, pal's throw is in the middle distance. Well done. Okay, Claudia threw a distance of 81.5. The distance of her shot put throw was between Yash pal's and Kaisha's. So that one and that one. What could what throwing distances could she have been? Well, it's a variety of distances. Um between those two because the discus could have been and it doesn't tell us what her discus is so we could have various examples so she could have thrown 14 meters 
and that means her discus would have been that. You might have got a different answer and that's fine. So you can see we've got some diving in sheets for you to have a go at now. You don't have to do all the sheets. Remember to have a look at the symbol on the top as which part of the sheet you need to do. Good luck, guys. Hope you do well. Bye bye.